The First Gospel of the Infancy of Jesus Christ Preface Mr. Henry C.K., Professor of Oriental Languages at Cambridge, first translated and published this gospel in 1697. It was received by the Gnostics, a sect of Christians in the second century, and several of its relations were credited in the following ages by other Christians, viz. Eusebius, Athanasius, Epiphanius, Chrysostom, and C. Sozomen says he was told by many, and he credits the relations of the idols in Egypt falling down on Joseph and Mary's flight thither with Christ, and of Christ making a well to wash his clothes in a sycamore tree, from whence balsam afterwards proceeded. These stories are from this gospel. Chemnitless out of Stipulensis, who had it from Peter Martyr, Bishop of Alexandria, in the third century says that the place in Egypt where Christ was banished is now called Mataria, about ten miles beyond Cairo, that the inhabitants constantly burn a lamp in remembrance of it, and that there is a garden of trees yielding a balsam, which were planted by Christ when a boy. M. La Croix cites a synod at Angamala, in the mountains of Malabar, AD 1599, which condemns this gospel as commonly read by the Nestorians in that country. Ahmed ibn Idris, a Mahometan divine, says it was used by some Christians in common with the other four gospels, and Ocobius de Castro mentions the Gospel of Thomas, which he says, he saw and had translated to him by an Armenian archbishop at Amsterdam that was read in very many churches of Asia and Africa as the only rule of their faith. Fabricius takes it to be this gospel. It has been supposed that Muhammad and his coadjutors used it in compiling the Quran. There are several stories believed of Christ proceeding from this gospel, as that which Mr. C.K. relates out of La Brasa's Persic Lexicon, that Christ practiced the trade of a dyer, and his working a miracle with the colors, from whence the Persian dyers honor him as their patron, and call a dye house the shop of Christ. Sir John Chardon mentions Persian legends concerning Christ's dispute with his schoolmaster about his ABC, and his lengthening the cedar board which Joseph saw too short. Chapter 1 Caiaphas relates that Jesus, when in his cradle, informed his mother that he was the Son of God. Joseph and Mary, going to Bethlehem to be taxed, find that Mary's time of bringing forth has arrived, and she goes into a cave. Joseph fetches a Hebrew woman, and the cave fills with great light. The infant is born, cures the woman, and the shepherds arrive. The following accounts we found in the book of Joseph the high priest, called by some Caiaphas. He relates that Jesus spoke even when he was in the cradle and said to his mother, Mary, I am Jesus the Son of God, that word which thou didst bring forth according to the declaration of the angel Gabriel to thee, and my Father hath sent me for the salvation of the world. In the 309th year of the era of Alexander, Augustus published a decree that all persons should go to be taxed in their own country. Joseph therefore arose, and with Mary his spouse, went to Jerusalem and then came to Bethlehem, that he and his family might be taxed in the city of his fathers. When they came by the cave, Mary confessed to Joseph that her time of bringing forth had come, and she could not go on to the city and said, Let us go into this cave. At that time, the sun was very near going down. Joseph hastened away to fetch a midwife and saw an old Hebrew woman who was of Jerusalem. He said to her, Pray come hither, good woman, and go into that cave, and you will see a woman just ready to bring forth. It was after sunset when the old woman and Joseph reached the cave, and they both went into it. Behold, it was filled with lights greater than the light of lamps and candles and greater than the light of the sun itself. The infant was then wrapped up in swaddling clothes and sucking the breasts of his mother, Saint Mary. When they saw this light, they were surprised. The old woman asked Saint Mary, Art thou the mother of this child? Saint Mary replied she was. The old woman said, Thou art very different from all other women. Saint Mary answered, As there is not any child like my son, so either is there any woman like his mother. The old woman said, O my lady, I am come hither that I may obtain an everlasting reward. Then Our Lady, Saint Mary, said to her, Lay thine hands upon the infant, which she did and became whole. As she was going forth, she said, From henceforth, all the days of my life, I will attend upon and be a servant of this infant. After this, when the shepherds came and made a fire, they were exceedingly rejoicing. The heavenly host appeared to them, 
praising and adoring the supreme God. As the shepherds were engaged in the same employment, the cave at that time seemed like a glorious temple because both the tongues of angels and men united to adore and magnify God on account of the birth of the Lord Christ. When the old Hebrew woman saw all these evident miracles, she gave praises to God and said, I thank thee, O God, thou God of Israel, for that mine eyes have seen the birth of the Savior of the world. Chapter 2 The child is circumcised in the cave, and the old woman preserves his foreskin or navel string in a box of spikenard. Mary later anoints Christ with it. Christ is brought to the temple, shines, and angels stand around him adoring. Simeon praises Christ. When the time of his circumcision came, on the eighth day as the law commanded, they circumcised him in the cave. The old Hebrew woman took the foreskin, others say she took the navel string, and preserved it in an alabaster box of old oil of spikenard. She had a son who was a druggist, to whom she said, Take heed thou sell not this alabaster box of spikenard ointment, although thou shouldst be offered three hundred pence for it. This is that alabaster box which Mary the sinner procured and poured forth the ointment out of it upon the head and the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ and wiped it off with the hairs of her head. After ten days they brought him to Jerusalem, and on the fortieth day from his birth they presented him in the temple before the Lord, making the proper offerings for him according to the requirement of the law of Moses, that every male which opens the womb shall be called holy unto God. At that time, Old Simeon saw him shining as a pillar of light when Saint Mary the Virgin, his mother, carried him in her arms and was filled with the greatest pleasure at the sight. The angels stood around him, adoring him as a king's guards stand around him. Then Simeon, going near to Saint Mary and stretching forth his hands towards her, said to the Lord Christ, Now, O my Lord, thy servant shall depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy mercy which thou hast prepared for the salvation of all nations, a light to all people and the glory of thy people Israel. Hannah the prophetess was also present, and drawing near, she gave praises to God and celebrated the happiness of Mary. Chapter 3 The Wise Men Visit Christ Mary gives them one of his swaddling clothes. An angel appears to them in the form of a star. They return, make a fire, worship the swaddling cloth, and put it in the fire, where it remains unconsumed. When the Lord Jesus was born at Bethlehem, a city of Judea, in the time of Herod the king, the wise men came from the east to Jerusalem according to the prophecy of Zoradasht, and brought with them offerings, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and worshipped him and offered to him their gifts. Then the Lady Mary took one of his swaddling clothes in which the infant was wrapped and gave it to them instead of a blessing which they received from her as a most noble present. At the same time, an angel appeared to them in the form of that star which had before been their guide in their journey, the light of which they followed till they returned to their own country. On their return, their kings and princes came to them inquiring what they had seen and done, what sort of journey and return they had, and what company they had on the road. They produced the swaddling cloth which Saint Mary had given to them, on account of which they kept a feast. Having according to the custom of their country, made a fire, they worshipped it. Casting the swaddling cloth into it, the fire took it and kept it. When the fire was put out, they took forth the swaddling cloth unhurt, as much as if the fire had not touched it. Then they began to kiss it and put it upon their heads and their eyes, saying, This is certainly an undoubted truth, and it is really surprising that the fire could not burn it and consume it. Then they took it and with the greatest respect laid it up among their treasures. Chapter 4 Herod intends to put Christ to death. An angel warns Joseph to take the child and its mother into Egypt. Consternation on their arrival. The idols fall down. Mary washes Christ's swaddling clothes and hangs them to dry on a post. A son of the chief priest puts one on his head, and being possessed of devils, they leave him. Herod Perceiving that the wise men did delay and not return to him, called together the priests and wise men and said, Tell me in what place the Christ should be born. When they replied, In Bethlehem, a city of Judea, he began to contrive in his own mind the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. But an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in his sleep and said, Arise, take the child and his mother, and go into Egypt as soon as the cock crows. So he arose and went. 
As he was considering with himself about his journey, the morning came upon him. In the length of the journey, the girths of the saddle broke. He drew near to a great city, in which there was an idol to which the other idols and gods of Egypt brought their offerings and vows. There was by this idol a priest ministering to it, who, as often as Satan spoke out of that idol, related the things he said to the inhabitants of Egypt and those countries. This priest had a son three years old, who was possessed with a great multitude of devils, who uttered many strange things, and when the devil seized him, he walked about naked with his clothes torn, throwing stones at those whom he saw. Near to that idol was the inn of the city, into which Joseph and Saint Mary came and turned into that inn. All the inhabitants of the city were astonished. All the magistrates and priests of the idols assembled before that idol and made inquiry, saying, What means all this consternation and dread which has fallen upon all our country? The idol answered them, The unknown God is come hither, who is truly God, nor is there anyone besides him who is worthy of divine worship, for he is truly the Son of God. At the fame of him, this country trembled, and at his coming, it is under the present commotion and consternation, and we ourselves are affrighted by the greatness of his power. At the same instant, this idol fell down, and at his fall, all the inhabitants of Egypt, besides others, ran together. The son of the priest, when his usual disorder came upon him, went into the inn and found Joseph and St. Mary, whom all the rest had left behind and forsook. When the lady St. Mary had washed the swaddling clothes of the Lord Christ and hanged them out to dry upon a post, the boy possessed with the devil took down one of them and put it upon his head. Presently the devils began to come out of his mouth and fly away in the shape of crows and serpents. From that time, the boy was healed by the power of the Lord Christ, and he began to sing praises and give thanks to the Lord who had healed him. When his father saw him restored to his former state of health, he said, My son, what has happened to thee, and by what means wert thou cured? The son answered, When the devil seized me, I went into the inn and there found a very handsome woman with a boy whose swaddling clothes she had just before washed and hanged out upon a post. One of these I took and put it upon my head, and immediately the devils left me and fled away. At this, the father exceedingly rejoiced and said, My son, perhaps this boy is the son of the living God who made the heavens and the earth. For as soon as he came amongst us, the idol was broken, and all the gods fell down and were destroyed by a greater power. Then was fulfilled the prophecy which saith, Out of Egypt, I have called my son. Chapter 5 Joseph and Mary leave Egypt. They go to the haunts of robbers, who, hearing a mighty noise as of a great army, flee away. When Joseph and Mary heard that the idol had fallen down and was destroyed, they were seized with fear and trembling and said, When we were in the land of Israel, Herod, intending to kill Jesus, slew for that purpose all the infants at Bethlehem and that neighborhood. There is no doubt but the Egyptians, if they come to hear that this idol is broken and fallen down, will burn us with fire. They went to the secret places of robbers, who robbed travelers as they passed by, of their carriages and their clothes, and carried them away bound. These thieves, upon their coming, heard a great noise, such as the noise of a king with a great army and many horses, and the trumpets sounding at his overture from his own city, at which they were so affrighted as to leave all their booty behind them and flee away in haste. Upon this, the prisoners arose and loosed each other's bonds, and taking each man his bags, they went away and saw Joseph and Mary coming towards them and inquired, Where is that king, the noise of whose approach the robbers heard, and left us, so that we are now come off safe? Joseph answered, He will come after us. Chapter 6 Mary looks on a woman in whom Satan had taken up his abode, and she becomes dispossessed. Christ kissed by a bride made dumb by sorcerers, cures her, miraculously cures a gentlewoman in whom Satan had taken up his abode. A leprous girl cured by the water in which he was washed, and becomes the servant of Mary and Joseph. The leprous son of a prince's wife is cured in like manner. His mother offers large gifts to Mary and dismisses her. They went into another place where there was a woman possessed with the devil, in whom Satan, that cursed rebel, had taken up his abode. One night, when she went to fetch water, she could neither endure her clothes on nor be in any house. 
But as often as they tied her with chains or cords, she broke them and went out into desert places, sometimes standing where roads crossed and in churchyards, throwing stones at men. When St. Mary saw this woman, she pitied her, whereupon Satan presently left her and fled away in the form of a young man, saying, Woe to me because of thee, Mary, and thy son. The woman was delivered from her torment, but considering herself naked, she blushed and avoided seeing any man, and having put on her clothes, went home and gave an account of her case to her father and relations, who, as they were the best of the city, entertained St. Mary and Joseph with the greatest respect. The next morning, having received a sufficient supply of provisions for the road, they went from them and about the evening of the day arrived at another town where a marriage was then about to be solemnized. By the arts of Satan and the practices of some sorcerers, the bride was made so dumb that she could not so much as open her mouth. When this dumb bride saw the Lady Saint Mary entering the town, carrying the Lord Christ in her arms, she stretched out her hands to the Lord Christ and took him in her arms, closely hugging him and very often kissing him, continually moving him and pressing him to her body. Straightway, the string of her tongue was loosed, and her ears were opened, and she began to sing praises unto God, who had restored her. There was great joy among the inhabitants of the town that night, who thought that God and his angels had come down among them. In this place, they abode three days, meeting with the greatest respect and most splendid entertainment. Being then furnished by the people with provisions for the road, they departed and went to another city in which they were inclined to lodge because it was a famous place. There was in this city a gentlewoman, who, as she went down one day to the river to bathe, behold, cursed Satan leaped upon her in the form of a serpent and folded himself about her belly, laying upon her every night. This woman, seeing the Lady Saint Mary and the Lord Christ the Infant in her bosom, asked the Lady Saint Mary if she would give her the child to kiss and carry in her arms. When she consented, and as soon as the woman had moved the child, Satan left her and fled away, nor did the woman ever afterwards see him. Hereupon, all the neighbors praised the supreme God, and the woman rewarded them with ample beneficence. On the morrow, the same woman brought perfumed water to wash the Lord Jesus, and when she had washed him, she preserved the water. There was a girl there, whose body was white with a leprosy, who, being sprinkled with this water and washed, was instantly cleansed from her leprosy. The people therefore said, Without doubt Joseph and Mary and that boy are gods, for they do not look like mortals. When they were making ready to go away, the girl who had been troubled with the leprosy came and desired they would permit her to go along with them. They consented, and the girl went with them till they came to a city in which was the palace of a great king and whose house was not far from the inn. Here they stayed and when the girl went one day to the prince's wife and found her in a sorrowful and mournful condition, she asked her the reason for her tears. She replied, Wonder not at my groans, for I am under a great misfortune, of which I dare not tell anyone. But says the girl, If you will entrust me with your private grievance, perhaps I may find you a remedy for it. Thou, therefore, says the prince's wife, shalt keep the secret and not discover it to anyone alive. I have been married to this prince, who rules as king over large dominions and lived long with him before he had any child by me. At length I conceived by him, but alas! I brought forth a leprous son, which, when he saw, he would not own to be his, but said to me, Either do thou kill him or send him to some nurse in such a place, that he may never be heard of, and now take care of yourself, I will never see you more. So here I pine, lamenting my wretched and miserable circumstances. Alas, my son! Alas, my husband! Have I disclosed it to you? The girl replied, I have found a remedy for your disease, which I promise you, for I also was leprous. But God hath cleansed me, even he who is called Jesus, the son of the Lady Mary. The woman inquiring where that God was whom she spoke of, the girl answered, He lodges with you here in the same house. But how can this be? Says she, Where is he? Behold, replied the girl, Joseph and Mary, and the infant who is with them is called Jesus, and it is he who delivered me from my disease and torment. By what means, says she, were you cleansed from your leprosy? Will you not tell me that? Why not? Says the girl, I took the water with which his body had been washed and poured it upon me, and my leprosy vanished. 
The prince's wife then arose and entertained them, providing a great feast for Joseph among a large company of men. The next day, she took perfumed water to wash the Lord Jesus and afterwards poured the same water upon her son, whom she had brought with her, and her son was instantly cleansed from his leprosy. Then she sang thanks and praises unto God, saying, Blessed is the mother that bore thee, O Jesus. Dost thou thus cure men of the same nature with thyself with the water with which thy body is washed? She then offered very large gifts to the Lady Mary and sent her away with all imaginable respect. Chapter 7 A man who could not enjoy his wife is freed from his disorder. A young man who had been bewitched and turned into a mule is miraculously cured by Christ being put on his back and is married to the girl who had been cured of leprosy. They came afterwards to another city and had a mind to lodge there. They went to a man's house who was newly married, but by the influence of sorcerers could not enjoy his wife. They lodged at his house that night, and the man was freed from his disorder. When they were preparing early in the morning to go forward on their journey, the newly married person hindered them and provided a noble entertainment for them. Going forward the next day, they came to another city and saw three women going from a certain grave with great weeping. When St. Mary saw them, she spoke to the girl who was their companion, saying, Go and inquire of them what is the matter with them and what misfortune has befallen them. When the girl asked them, they made her no answer but asked her again, Who are ye, and where are ye going? For the day is far spent, and the night is at hand. We are travelers, said the girl, and are seeking for an inn to lodge at. They replied, Go along with us and lodge with us. They followed them and were introduced into a new house, well furnished with all sorts of furniture. It was now winter time, and the girl went into the parlor where these women were and found them weeping and lamenting as before. By them stood a mule covered over with silk and an ebony collar hanging down from its neck, whom they kissed and were feeding. When the girl said, How handsome, ladies, that mule is! They replied with tears, saying, This mule, which you see, was our brother, born of the same mother as we. When our father died and left us a very large estate, we had only this brother and endeavored to procure him a suitable match and thought he should be married as other men. Some giddy and jealous woman bewitched him without our knowledge. One night, a little before day, while the doors of the house were all fast shut, we saw our brother was changed into a mule, such as you now see him to be. We, in the melancholy condition in which you see us, having no father to comfort us, have applied to all the wise men, magicians, and diviners in the world, but they have been of no service to us. As often, therefore, as we find ourselves oppressed with grief, we rise and go with our mother to our father's tomb, where, when we have cried sufficiently, we return home. When the girl heard this, she said, Take courage and cease your fears, for you have a remedy for your afflictions near at hand, even among you and in the midst of your house. For I was also leprous. But when I saw this woman and this little infant with her, whose name is Jesus, I sprinkled my body with the water with which his mother had washed him, and I was presently made well. I am certain that he is also capable of relieving you under your distress. Arise, go to my mistress Mary, and when you have brought her into your parlor, disclose to her the secret, at the same time earnestly beseeching her to compassionate your case. As soon as the women heard the girl's discourse, they hastened away to the Lady Mary, introduced themselves to her, and sitting down before her, they wept, saying, O our Lady Mary, pity your handmaids, for we have no head of our family, no one older than us no father or brother to go in and out before us. This mule, which you see, was our brother, whom some woman by witchcraft has brought into this condition. We entreat you to compassionate us. Saint Mary was grieved at their case, and taking the Lord Jesus, put him upon the back of the mule and said to her son, O Jesus Christ, restore, or heal, according to thy extraordinary power this mule, and grant him to have again the shape of a man and a rational creature as he had formerly. This was scarcely said by the Lady Mary when the mule immediately passed into a human form and became a young man without any deformity. Then he, his mother, and his sisters worshipped the Lady Mary and lifting the child upon their heads, they kissed him, saying, Blessed is thy mother, O Jesus, O Savior of the world. Blessed are the eyes which are so happy as to see thee. Both the sisters told their mother, saying, Of a truth, 
Our brother is restored to his former shape by the help of the Lord Jesus Christ and the kindness of that girl who told us of Mary and her son. Inasmuch as our brother is unmarried, it is fit that we marry him to this girl, their servant. When they consulted Mary on this matter, and she gave her consent, they made a splendid wedding for this girl. So their sorrow was turned into gladness, their mourning into mirth, and they began to rejoice and make merry and sing, being dressed in their richest attire with bracelets. They glorified and praised God, saying, O Jesus, Son of David, who changes sorrow into gladness and mourning into mirth. After this, Joseph and Mary tarried there ten days, then went away, having received great respect from those people, who, when they took their leave and returned home, cried, especially the girl. Chapter 8 Joseph and Mary passed through a country infested by robbers. Titus, a humane thief, offers Demachus, his comrade, forty groats to let Joseph and Mary pass unmolested. Jesus prophesies that the thieves, Demachus and Titus, shall be crucified with him, and that Titus shall go before him into paradise. Christ causes a well to spring from a sycamore tree, and Mary washes his coat in it. A balsam grows there from his sweat. They go to Memphis, where Christ works more miracles. Return to Judea and, being warned, depart for Nazareth. In their journey, they came into a desert country and were told it was infested with robbers. Joseph and Mary prepared to pass through it in the night. As they were going along, they saw two robbers asleep in the road, with a great number of robbers, their confederates, also asleep. The names of these two were Titus and Dumachus. Titus said to Dumachus, I beseech thee, let those persons go along quietly, that our company may not perceive anything of them. Dumachus refused, and Titus again said, I will give thee forty groats, and as a pledge take my girdle, which he gave him after he had done speaking, that he might not open his mouth or make a noise. When the Lady Mary saw the kindness which this robber showed them, she said to him, The Lord God will receive thee to his right hand and grant thee pardon for thy sins. Then the Lord Jesus answered and said to his mother, When thirty years are expired, O mother, the Jews will crucify me at Jerusalem. These two thieves shall be with me at the same time upon the cross, Titus on my right hand, and Demachus on my left. From that time, Titus shall go before me into paradise. When she had said, God forbid this should be thy lot, O my son, they went to a city in which there were several idols. As soon as they came near to it, it was turned into hills of sand. They went to that sycamore tree, now called Materia. In Materia, the Lord Jesus caused a well to spring forth, in which Mary washed his coat. A balsam is produced or grows in that country from the sweat which ran down from the Lord Jesus. They proceeded to Memphis, saw Pharaoh, and abode three years in Egypt. The Lord Jesus did very many miracles in Egypt, which are neither to be found in the gospel of the infancy nor in the gospel of perfection. At the end of three years, he returned out of Egypt, and when he came near Judea, Joseph was afraid to enter. Hearing that Herod was dead and that Archelaus, his son, reigned in his stead, he was afraid. When he went to Judea, an angel of God appeared to him and said, O Joseph, go into the city Nazareth and abide there. It is strange indeed that he, who is the Lord of all countries, should be thus carried backward and forward through so many countries. Chapter 9 Two sick children are cured by the water in which Christ was washed. When they came afterwards into Bethlehem, they found there several very desperate distempers, which became so troublesome to children that most of them died. There was a woman who had a sick son, whom she brought, when he was at the point of death, to Mary, who saw her washing Jesus Christ. The woman said, O my lady Mary, look down upon this my son, who is afflicted with most dreadful pains. Mary said, Take a little of that water with which I have washed my son, and sprinkle it upon him. The woman took a little of that water, as Mary had commanded, and sprinkled it upon her son, who, being wearied with his violent pains, had fallen asleep. After he had slept a little, he awoke perfectly well and recovered. The mother, being abundantly glad of this success, went again to Mary, who said to her, Give praise to God, who hath cured this thy son. There was another woman, a neighbor of hers, whose son was now cured. This woman's son was afflicted with the same disease, 
and his eyes were now almost quite shut, and she was lamenting for him day and night. The mother of the child who was cured said to her, Why do you not bring your son to Mary? As I brought my son to her when he was in the agonies of death, and he was cured by that water with which the body of her son Jesus was washed. When the woman heard her say this, she also went, and having procured the same water, washed her son with it, whereupon his body and his eyes were instantly restored to their former state. When she brought her son to Mary and opened his case to her, Mary commanded her to give thanks to God for the recovery of her son's health and to tell no one what had happened. Chapter 10 Two wives of one man each have a son sick. One of them, named Mary, and whose son's name was Caleb, presents the virgin with a handsome carpet, and Caleb is cured, but the son of the other wife dies, which occasions a difference between the women. The other wife puts Caleb into a hot oven, and he is miraculously preserved. She afterward throws him into a well, and he is again preserved. His mother appeals to the virgin against the other wife, whose downfall the virgin prophesies, and who accordingly falls into the well, thereby fulfilling a saying of old. There were in the same city two wives of one man, each of whom had a son sick. One of them was called Mary, and her son's name was Caleb. She arose and, taking her son, went to the Lady Mary, the mother of Jesus, and offered her a very handsome carpet, saying, O my Lady Mary, accept this carpet from me, and instead of it give me a small swaddling cloth. Mary agreed, and when the mother of Caleb was gone, she made a coat for her son of the swaddling cloth, put it on him, and his disease was cured, but the son of the other wife died. Hereupon, there arose between them a difference in doing the business of the family by turns, each her week. When the turn of Mary, the mother of Caleb, came, she was heating the oven to bake bread and went away to fetch the meal, leaving her son Caleb by the oven. The other wife, her rival, seeing him by himself, took and cast him into the oven, which was very hot, and then went away. Mary, on her return, saw her son Caleb lying in the middle of the oven laughing, and the oven was as cold as though it had not been before heated. She knew that her rival, the other wife, had thrown him into the fire. When she took him out, she brought him to the Lady Mary and told her the story, to whom she replied, Be quiet, I am concerned lest thou shouldest make this matter known. After this, her rival, the other wife, as she was drawing water at the well and saw Caleb playing by the well, and no one was near, took him and threw him into the well. When some men came to fetch water from the well, they saw the boy sitting on the surface of the water, drew him out with ropes, and were exceedingly surprised at the child and praised God. The mother took him and carried him to the Lady Mary, lamenting and saying, O my lady, see what my rival hath done to my son, and how she hath cast him into the well. I do not question but one time or another she will be the occasion of his death. Mary replied, God will vindicate your injured cause. Accordingly, a few days later, when the other wife came to the well to draw water, her foot was entangled in the rope so that she fell headlong into the well. Those who ran to her assistance found her skull broken and bones bruised. She came to a bad end, fulfilling the saying of the author, they dug a well and made it deep, but fell themselves into the pit which they prepared. Chapter 11 Bartholomew, when a child and sick, is miraculously restored by being laid on Christ's bed. Another woman in that city likewise had two sons sick. When one was dead, the other, who lay at the point of death, she took in her arms to the Lady Mary, and in a flood of tears addressed her, saying, O my lady, help and relieve me, for I had two sons, one I have just now buried, the other I see is at the point of death. Behold how I earnestly seek favor from God and pray to him. She said, O Lord, thou art gracious and merciful and kind, thou hast given me two sons, one of them thou hast taken to thyself. O spare me this other. Mary, perceiving the greatness of her sorrow, pitied her and said, Do thou place thy son in my son's bed and cover him with his clothes. When she had placed him in the bed wherein Christ lay, at the moment when his eyes were just closed by death, as soon as the smell of the garments of the Lord Jesus Christ reached the boy, his eyes were opened, and calling with a loud voice to his mother, he asked for bread, and when he had received it, he ate it. Then his mother said, O Lady Mary, 
Now I am assured that the powers of God do dwell in you so that thy son can cure children who are of the same sort as himself as soon as they touch his garments. This boy who was thus cured is the same who in the gospel is called Bartholomew. Chapter 12 A leprous woman is healed by Christ's washing water. A princess is healed by it and restored to her husband. Again, there was a leprous woman who went to the Lady Mary, the mother of Jesus, and said, O my lady, help me. Mary replied, What help dost thou desire? Is it gold or silver, or that thy body be cured of its leprosy? Who, says the woman, can grant me this? Mary replied, Wait a little till I have washed my son Jesus and put him to bed. The woman waited as she was commanded, and Mary, when she had put Jesus in bed, gave her the water with which she had washed his body, saying, Take some of the water and pour it upon thy body. When she had done so, she instantly became clean and praised God and gave thanks to him. She went away after she had stayed with her three days. Going into the city, she saw a certain prince who had married another prince's daughter. When he came to see her, he perceived between her eyes the signs of leprosy like a star, and thereupon declared the marriage dissolved and void. When the woman saw these persons in this condition, exceedingly sorrowful and shedding many tears, she inquired of them the reason for their crying. They replied, Inquire not into our circumstances, for we are not able to declare our misfortunes to anyone. But she pressed and desired them to communicate their case to her, intimating that perhaps she might be able to direct them to a remedy. When they showed the young woman to her and the signs of the leprosy, which appeared between her eyes, she said, I also, whom ye see in this place, was afflicted with the same disease, and going on some business to Bethlehem, I went into a certain cave and saw a woman named Mary, who had a son called Jesus. Seeing me to be leprous, she was concerned for me and gave me some water with which she had washed her son's body. With that, I sprinkled my body and became clean. Then said these women, Will you, mistress, go along with us and show the Lady Mary to us? To which she consented, and they arose and went to the Lady Mary, taking with them very noble presents. When they came in and offered their presents to her, they showed the leprous young woman what they brought with them to her. Mary said, The mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ rests upon you, giving them a little of that water with which she had washed the body of Jesus Christ. She bade them wash the diseased person with it. When they had done so, she was presently cured. They, and all who were present, praised God, and being filled with joy, they went back to their own city and gave praise to God on that account. When the prince heard that his wife was cured, he took her home and made a second marriage, giving thanks unto God for the recovery of his wife's health. Chapter 13 A girl, whose blood Satan sucked, receives one of Christ's swaddling clothes from the virgin. Satan comes like a dragon, and she shows it to him. Flames and burning coals proceed from it and fall upon him. He is miraculously discomfited and leaves the girl. There was also a girl who was afflicted by Satan. That cursed spirit frequently appeared to her in the shape of a dragon and was inclined to swallow her up. He had sucked out all her blood so that she looked like a dead carcass. As often as she came to herself, with her hands ringed about her head, she would cry out, Woe is me, that there is no one to be found who can deliver me from that impious dragon. Her father and mother, and all who were about her and saw her, mourned and wept over her. All who were present would especially be in sorrow and tears when they heard her bewailing, saying, My brethren and friends, is there no one who can deliver me from this murderer? The prince's daughter, who had been cured of her leprosy, hearing the complaint of that girl, went upon the top of her castle and saw her with her hands twisted about her head, pouring out a flood of tears, and all the people that were about her in sorrow. She asked the husband of the possessed person whether his wife's mother was alive. He told her that her father and mother were both alive. Then she ordered her mother to be sent to her. When she saw her coming, she said, Is this possessed girl thy daughter? She, moaning and bewailing, said, Yes, madam, I bore her. The prince's daughter answered, Disclose the secret of her case to me, for I confess to you that I was leprous. But the Lady Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, healed me. If you desire your daughter to be restored to her former state, take her to Bethlehem and inquire for Mary, the mother of Jesus, and doubt not but your daughter will be cured, 
for I do not question but you will come home with great joy at your daughter's recovery. As soon as she had done speaking, she arose and went with her daughter to the place appointed, and to Mary, and told her the case of her daughter. When Mary heard her story, she gave her a little of the water with which she had washed the body of her son Jesus, and bade her pour it upon the body of her daughter. Likewise, she gave her one of the swaddling clothes of the Lord Jesus, saying, Take this swaddling cloth and show it to thine enemy as often as thou sayest him. She sent them away in peace. After they had left that city and returned home, the time came when Satan was wont to seize her. At the same moment, this cursed spirit appeared to her in the shape of a huge dragon, and the girl, seeing him, was afraid. The mother said to her, Be not afraid, daughter. Let him alone till he comes nearer to thee. Then show him the swaddling cloth, which the Lady Mary gave us, and we shall see the event. Satan, coming like a dreadful dragon, caused the body of the girl to tremble with fear. As soon as she put the swaddling cloth upon her head and about her eyes and showed it to him, flames and burning coals issued forth from the swaddling cloth and fell upon the dragon. Oh, how great a miracle was this! As soon as the dragon saw the swaddling cloth of the Lord Jesus, fire went forth and was scattered upon his head and eyes so that he cried out with a loud voice, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of Mary? Whither shall I flee from thee? He drew back much affrighted and left the girl. She was delivered from this trouble and sang praises and thanks to God, with all who were present at the working of the miracle. Chapter 14 Judas, when a boy possessed by Satan and brought by his parents to Jesus to be cured, tries to bite Jesus but fails. He strikes Jesus and makes him cry out. Satan goes from Jesus in the shape of a dog. Another woman likewise lived there, whose son was possessed by Satan. This boy, named Judas, as often as Satan seized him, was inclined to bite all that were present, and if he found no one else near him, he would bite his own hands and other parts. The mother of this miserable boy, hearing of Mary and her son Jesus, arose and took her son in her arms, bringing him to the Lady Mary. Meanwhile, James and Jose's had taken away the infant, the Lord Jesus to play at a proper season with other children. When they went forth, they sat down, and the Lord Jesus with them. Judas, who was possessed, came and sat down at the right hand of Jesus. When Satan was acting upon him as usual, he went about to bite the Lord Jesus. Because he could not do it, he struck Jesus on the right side, making him cry out. At the same moment, Satan went out of the boy and ran away like a mad dog. This same boy who struck Jesus, out of whom Satan went in the form of a dog, was Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him to the Jews. That same side on which Judas struck him, the Jews pierced with a spear. Chapter 15 Jesus and other boys play together and make clay figures of animals. Jesus causes them to walk, also makes clay birds, which he causes to fly, eat, and drink. The children's parents are alarmed and take Jesus for a sorcerer. He goes to a dyer's shop and throws all the cloths into the furnace, working a miracle with them. Whereupon the Jews praise God. When the Lord Jesus was seven years of age, he was one day with other boys, his companions about the same age. They made clay into several shapes, namely, asses, oxen, birds, and other figures, each boasting of his work and endeavoring to exceed the rest. Then the Lord Jesus said to the boys, I will command these figures which I have made to walk immediately they moved, and when he commanded them to return, they returned. He had also made figures of birds and sparrows, which, when he commanded to fly, did fly, and when he commanded to stand still, did stand still. If he gave them meat and drink, they did eat and drink. When the boys went away and related these things to their parents, their fathers said to them, Take heed, children, for the future of his company, for he is a sorcerer, shun and avoid him, and from henceforth never play with him. On a certain day, the Lord Jesus was playing with the boys and running about. He passed by a dyer's shop, whose name was Salem. There were many pieces of cloth belonging to the people of that city in his shop, which they designed to dye in several colors. The Lord Jesus, going into the dyer's shop, took all the cloths and threw them into the furnace. When Salem came home and saw the cloth spoiled, he began to make a great noise and to chide the Lord Jesus, saying, What hast thou done to me, 
O thou son of Mary? Thou hast injured both me and my neighbors. They all desired their cloths of a proper color, but thou hast come and spoiled them all. The Lord Jesus replied, I will change the color of every cloth to what color thou desirest. He then began to take the cloths out of the furnace, and they were all dyed the same colors which the dyer desired. When the Jews saw this surprising miracle, they praised God. Chapter 16 Christ miraculously widens or contracts the gates, milk pails, sieves, or bones not properly made by Joseph, he not being skillful at his carpenter's trade. The king of Jerusalem gives Joseph an order for a throne. Joseph works on it for two years in the king's palace and makes it two spans too short. The king, being angry with him, Jesus comforts him, commands him to pull one side of the throne while he pulls the other and brings it to its proper dimensions. Whereupon the bystanders praise God. Joseph, wheresoever he went in the city, took the Lord Jesus with him, where he was sent for to work to make gates, or milk pails, or sieves, or boxes. The Lord Jesus was with him wherever he went. As often as Joseph had anything in his work to make longer or shorter, wider or narrower, the Lord Jesus would stretch his hand towards it. Presently it became as Joseph would have it. He had no need to finish anything with his own hands, for he was not very skillful at his carpenter's trade. On a certain time, the king of Jerusalem sent for him and said, I would have thee make me a throne of the same dimensions with that place in which I commonly sit. Joseph obeyed and began the work, continuing for two years in the king's palace before finishing it. When he came to fix it in its place, he found it wanted two spans on each side of the appointed measure. When the king saw this, he was very angry with Joseph. Joseph, afraid of the king's anger, went to bed without his supper, taking nothing to eat. The Lord Jesus asked him what he was afraid of. Joseph replied, Because I have lost my labor in the work which I have been about these two years. Jesus said to him, Fear not, either be cast down. Lay hold on one side of the throne, and I will the other, and we will bring it to its just dimensions. When Joseph had done as the Lord Jesus said and each of them had drawn his side with strength, the throne obeyed and was brought to the proper dimensions of the place. When they who stood by saw this miracle, they were astonished and praised God. The throne was made of the same wood which was in being in Solomon's time, namely, wood adorned with various shapes and figures. Chapter 17 Jesus plays with boys at hide and seek. Some women put his playfellows in a furnace, where they are transformed by Jesus into kids. Jesus calls them to go and play, and they are restored to their former shape. On another day, the Lord Jesus went out into the street and, seeing some boys who were met to play, joined himself to their company. When they saw him, they hid themselves and left him to seek for them. The Lord Jesus came to the gate of a certain house and asked some women who were standing there where the boys had gone. When they answered that there was no one there, the Lord Jesus said, Who are those whom ye see in the furnace? They answered, They were kids of three years old. Jesus cried out aloud, Come out hither, O ye kids, to your shepherd. Presently the boys came forth like kids and leaped about him. When the women saw this, they were exceedingly amazed and trembled. They immediately worshipped the Lord Jesus and besought him, saying, O our Lord Jesus, Son of Mary, Thou art truly that good shepherd of Israel. Have mercy on thy handmaids, who stand before thee, who do not doubt but that thou, O Lord, art come to save and not to destroy. After that, when the Lord Jesus said, The children of Israel are like Ethiopians among the people, the women said, Thou, Lord, knowest all things, nor is anything concealed from thee. But now we entreat thee, and beseech of thy mercy that thou wouldst restore those boys to their former state. Jesus said, Come hither, O boys, that we may go and play. Immediately, in the presence of these women, the kids were changed and returned into the shape of boys. Chapter 18 Jesus becomes the king of his playfellows, and they crown him with flowers. He miraculously causes a serpent who had bitten Simon the Canaanite, then a boy, to suck out all the poison again. The serpent bursts, and Christ restores the boy to health. In the month of Adar, Jesus gathered together the boys and ranked them as though he had been a king. They spread their garments on the ground for him to sit on, made a crown of flowers, put it upon his head, 
and stood on his right and left as the guards of a king. If anyone happened to pass by, they took him by force and said, Come hither and worship the king, that you may have a prosperous journey. While these things were being done, certain men came carrying a boy upon a couch. This boy, having gone with his companions to the mountain to gather wood and having found there a partridge's nest, put his hand in to take out the eggs and was stung by a poisonous serpent, which leaped out of the nest. He was forced to cry out for the help of his companions, who, when they came, found him lying upon the earth like a dead person. His neighbors came and carried him back into the city. When they came to the place where the Lord Jesus was sitting like a king and the other boys stood around him like his ministers, the boys made haste to meet him who was bitten by the serpent and said to his neighbors, Come and pay your respects to the king. When, by reason of their sorrow, they refused to come, the boys drew them and forced them against their wills to come. When they came to the Lord Jesus, he inquired on what account they carried that boy. When they answered that a serpent had bitten him, the Lord Jesus said to the boys, Let us go and kill that serpent. When the parents of the boy desired to be excused because their son lay at the point of death, the boys made answer, Did not ye hear what the king said? Let us go and kill the serpent, and will not ye obey him? They brought the couch back again, whether they would or not. When they came to the nest, the Lord Jesus said to the boys, Is this the serpent's lurking place? They said it was. The Lord Jesus called the serpent, and it presently came forth and submitted to him. He said, Go and suck out all the poison which thou hast infused into that boy. The serpent crept to the boy and took away all its poison again. The Lord Jesus cursed the serpent so that it immediately burst asunder and died. He touched the boy with his hand to restore him to his former health. When he began to cry, the Lord Jesus said, Cease crying, for hereafter thou shalt be my disciple. This is that Simon the Canaanite who is mentioned in the Gospel. Chapter 19 James, being bitten by a viper, Jesus blows on the wound and cures him. Jesus is charged with throwing a boy from the roof of a house, miraculously causes the dead boy to acquit him, fetches water for his mother, breaks the pitcher and miraculously gathers the water in his mantle and brings it home, makes fish pools on the Sabbath, causes a boy to die who broke them down, another boy runs against him, whom he also causes to die. On another day, Joseph sent his son James to gather wood, and the Lord Jesus went with him. When they came to the place where the wood was, and James began to gather it, a venomous viper bit him, so that he began to cry and make a noise. The Lord Jesus, seeing him in this condition, came to him and blew upon the place where the viper had bitten him, and it was instantly well. On a certain day, the Lord Jesus was with some boys playing on the housetop, and one of the boys fell down and died. The other boys all ran away, leaving the Lord Jesus alone on the housetop. The boy's relations came to him and said, Thou didst throw our son down from the housetop. He denied it, but they cried out, Our son is dead, and this is he who killed him. The Lord Jesus replied, Do not charge me with a crime of which you are not able to convict me, but let us go ask the boy himself, who will bring the truth to light. The Lord Jesus, going down, stood over the head of the dead boy and said with a loud voice, Zynanus, Zynanus, who threw thee down from the housetop? The dead boy answered, Thou didst not throw me down, but such a one did. When the Lord Jesus bade those who stood by to take notice of his words, all who were present praised God on account of that miracle. On a certain time, the Lady Mary had commanded the Lord Jesus to fetch her some water from the well. When he had gone to fetch the water, the pitcher, when it was brought up full, broke. But Jesus, spreading his mantle, gathered up the water again and brought it in that to his mother. She, being astonished at this wonderful thing, laid up this and all the other things she had seen in her memory. On another day, the Lord Jesus was with some boys by a river, and they drew water out of the river by little channels and made little fish pools. The Lord Jesus had made twelve sparrows and placed them about his pool on each side, three on a side. It was the Sabbath day, and the son of Hanani, a Jew, came by and saw them making these things. He said, Do you thus make figures of clay on the Sabbath? He ran to them and broke down their fish pools. When the Lord Jesus clapped his hands over the sparrows which he had made, they fled away chirping. At length, the son of Hanani, coming to the fish pool of Jesus to destroy it, 
the water vanished away, and the Lord Jesus said to him, In like manner as this water has vanished, so shall thy life vanish. Presently, the boy died. Another time, when the Lord Jesus was coming home in the evening with Joseph, he met a boy who ran so hard against him that he threw him down. The Lord Jesus said to him, As thou hast thrown me down, so shalt thou fall, nor ever rise. At that moment, the boy fell down and died. Chapter 20 Sent to school to Zacchaeus to learn his letters, and teaches Zacchaeus. Sent to another schoolmaster, refuses to tell his letters, and the schoolmaster going to whip him, his hand withers and he dies. There was also at Jerusalem one named Zacchaeus, who was a schoolmaster. He said to Joseph, Joseph, why dost thou not send Jesus to me, that he may learn his letters? Joseph agreed and told Mary. They brought him to that master, who, as soon as he saw him, wrote out an alphabet for him. He bade him say Aleph, and when he had said Aleph, the master bade him pronounce Beth. The Lord Jesus said to him, Tell me first the meaning of the letter Aleph, and then I will pronounce Beth. When the master threatened to whip him, the Lord Jesus explained to him the meaning of the letters Aleph and Beth, also which were the straight figures of the letters, which the oblique, and what letters had double figures, which had points and which had none, why one letter went before another, and many other things he began to tell him and explain, of which the master himself had never heard nor read in any book. The Lord Jesus further said to the master, Take notice of how I say to thee. Then he began clearly and distinctly to say Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Bileth, and so on to the end of the alphabet. At this, the master was so surprised that he said, I believe this boy was born before Noah. Turning to Joseph, he said, Thou hast brought a boy to me to be taught, who is more learned than any master. He also said unto Mary, This your son has no need of any learning. They brought him to a more learned master, who, when he saw him, said, Say Aleph. When he had said Aleph, the master bade him pronounce Beth. The Lord Jesus replied, Tell me first the meaning of the letter Aleph, and then I will pronounce Beth. This master, when he lifted up his hand to whip him, had his hand presently withered, and he died. Joseph said to Mary, Henceforth we will not allow him to go out of the house, for everyone who displeases him is killed. Chapter 21 Disputes miraculously with the doctors in the temple, on law, on astronomy, on physics and metaphysics, is worshipped by a philosopher, and fetched home by his mother. When he was twelve years old, they brought him to Jerusalem to the feast. When the feast was over, they returned. The Lord Jesus continued behind in the temple among the doctors and elders and learned men of Israel, to whom he proposed several questions of learning and also gave them answers. He said to them, Whose son is the Messiah? They answered, The son of David. Why then, said he, does he in the Spirit call him Lord? When he saith, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, till I have made thine enemies thy footstool. A certain principal rabbi asked him, Hast thou read books? Jesus answered, He had read both books and the things contained in books. He explained to them the books of the law, and precepts, and statutes, and the mysteries contained in the books of the prophets, things which the mind of no creature could reach. The rabbi said, I never yet have seen or heard of such knowledge. What do you think that boy will be? When a certain astronomer who was present asked the Lord Jesus whether he had studied astronomy, the Lord Jesus replied and told him the number of the spheres and heavenly bodies, as well as their triangular, square, and sextal aspects, their progressive and retrograde motion, their size and several prognostications, and other things which the reason of man had never discovered. There was also among them a philosopher well skilled in physics and natural philosophy, who asked the Lord Jesus whether he had studied physics. He replied and explained to him physics and metaphysics, as well as those things which were above and below the power of nature, the powers of the body, its humors, and their effects, the number of its members, bones, veins, arteries, and nerves, the several constitutions of the body, hot and dry, cold and moist, and their tendencies, how the soul operated upon the body, its various sensations and faculties, the faculty of speaking, anger, desire, and lastly the manner of its composition and dissolution, and other things which the understanding of no creature had ever reached. 
Then that philosopher arose and worshipped the Lord Jesus, saying, O Lord Jesus, from henceforth I will be thy disciple and servant. While they were discoursing on these and similar things, the Lady Mary came in, having been three days walking about with Joseph, seeking him. When she saw him sitting among the doctors, proposing questions to them and giving answers, she said to him, My son, why hast thou done thus by us? Behold, I and thy father have been at much pain in seeking thee. He replied, Why did ye seek me? Did ye not know that I ought to be employed in my father's house? But they did not understand the words which he said to them. The doctors asked Mary whether this was her son. When she said he was, they said, O happy Mary, who hast borne such a son. He returned with them to Nazareth and obeyed them in all things. His mother kept all these things in her mind. The Lord Jesus grew in stature and wisdom and favor with God and man. Chapter 22 Conceals his miracles, studies the law, and is baptized. From this time, Jesus began to conceal his miracles and secret works. He gave himself to the study of the law until he arrived at the end of his thirtieth year. At that time, the Father publicly owned him at Jordan, sending down this voice from heaven, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Holy Ghost was also present in the form of a dove. This is he whom we worship with all reverence because he gave us our life and being and brought us from our mother's womb, who, for our sakes, took a human body and hath redeemed us, so that he might embrace us with everlasting mercy and show his free, large, bountiful grace and goodness to us. To him be glory and praise and power and dominion, from henceforth and forevermore. Amen. The End of the Whole Gospel of the Infancy By the Assistance of the Supreme God According to what we found in the original